counted on KSBWA to be your friend for 40 years. KSBW Action News 8 has had many important newscasts in 1992, but none as important as the one we're working on right now. KSBW 8, count on us. I'm Margo Myers. I'm Alan Martin. Coming up next on Action News 8, the countdown continues for a Washington State man who is set to be hanged for committing three brutal murders. Also, uh, here comes another storm. San Lorenzo Valley residents gear up for the latest bout with Mother Nature. And it wasn't rain, but black ice that slowed traffic on Highway 17 this morning. Jim Adamson will let us know just how powerful the storm is going to be. Dennis will have number one versus 11 in College Hoop. All coming up next on tonight's Action News 8. KSBW 8, friends for 40 years. From the most watched station on the Central Coast, Marco Myers. Alan Martin, Jim Vanders, Juan Weather, and Dennis Lennon Sports. Count on Action News 8 at 11. Good evening. If you thought last week was wet, well, prepare to get soaked. A winter storm is headed our way, and it's predicted to pack twice the intensity of what we saw last week around the Central Coast. The Santa Cruz County Office of Emergency Services is already suggesting that folks get prepared. Dina Ruiz has more on that, more on what is being recommended for that. Dina? Well, the Central Coast, namely Santa Cruz County, has seen this one before. Heavy rains have in the past shut down roads and even caused accidents that have killed people. Emergency services workers say it may be clear now, but that won't be the case in a little over 12 hours, and they urge locals to prepare. The Boulder Creek Fire Department is ready for the worst. In this trailer, they have blankets, they've got some food, they've got a generator, so if we had an isolated area, Assistant Fire Chief Sam Robustelli says his community should be ready for a severe storm as well. I recommend that once we get into heavy rains and stuff, that people minimize their movement. They should stay home as much as possible and let the storm front go through and then come out afterwards. Um, have their children prepared as to what to do in case that mom and dad isn't home or can't get home. Robustelli says people need enough supplies to get through three days of isolation, just in case. Some locals were already taking that advice. We start with essential items, candles, bottled water, uh, flashlights, plenty of batteries, stuff like that. Santa Cruz County Emergency Services says to have first aid and medical supplies on hand, as well as food that requires little cooking. Also, a portable radio and flashlights are a must in case power is out for any length of time. Don't forget fresh batteries. Clerks at this Boulder Creek store say word of this storm has people buying. A lot of people are stocking up on the water, and people have been buying a lot more today. Really? Noticeable difference? Yeah, it has been noticeable difference. We had it filled up a couple times today. And it's water that could cause big problems. Officials say flooding and other weather-related calamities are likely to happen with heavy rain. The ground is now becoming saturated, so we're going to start getting more runoff. Springs are being activated. And people need to look around their homes and make sure their ditches are clear, make sure that if they have a potential slide area that they've done something with it as far as seeding it. The seeding causes roots to sprout and therefore it's more difficult for the dirt to wash away. Now people who have a problem preparing their home are urged to call their local fire departments. The fire departments can probably offer some help. And one more tip, they're urging people to fuel up because it's no fun to get gas in the rain for one reason, and if the power's out, the gas stations won't uh, have a way to get you gas. Yeah, that was a problem up in uh, the Redding area mm -hmm. when they had the big snows last week. Any specific warnings for people outside the San Lorenzo Valley? Plenty of warnings, of course, if gas, water, and electricity go out, we'll all be affected, so they urge everybody to have emergency supplies on hand, and also a big word to surfers and swimmers. They say there will be some high waves out there, so kind of stay out of the water. Yeah, use common sense. Okay, yeah. thanks, Dina. And Jim Adamson is in for Jim Vanderswan, and uh, this thing's still gonna gonna bring us the rain we've expected. It looks like a good one, although we're gonna back off a little bit on the timing, just right. just a little bit. We're not we're not you know covering it up or anything. It's still coming, and it's good when it's slower because that means that it's generally gonna take its time coming across the area, and that's why this system is so potent. We'll tell you about that. First of all, let's take a look at it on our satellite picture. This area of clouds you see, rather disorganized in the middle of your screen, that's part of the moisture of the system, but the real low is right to the middle left-hand corner of your screen. You can see it circulating here as we put things into motion. And another storm system to the north is already producing some cold weather and snow mixed with rain in Redding. Crescent City got two-thirds of an inch of rain from that system. These two are going to get together, and here's what happens. There's the low up to the north, the one in the Pacific there, and the low up to the north is going to come down and give us some cold air while the one in the Pacific moves in toward us, bringing moisture up from the south, and that X 
marks the spot where the two get together and will end up giving us copious amounts of rain and that means anywhere from one inch plus on the coastal areas two to four inches possible in the mountains and that does mean that the, the landslide potential is going to be a lot higher than it was in the last storm. Yeah, that's mm. a lot of rain. Yeah. Okay. okay, We'll Thanks, see you Jim. back in a few minutes. Okay. Thanks, Jim. The National Weather Service isn't so impressed with uh, all the rain and the snow that California has gotten. Government forecasters expect less than normal rain and snowfall in the state from now through March. They say it'll take many months, like December, to erase the drought, which is, of course, entering its seventh year. They are forecasting that that won't happen, at least not in 1993. Margo? People who travel Highway 17 are hoping for a smooth commute tomorrow after a huge delay this morning. Slippery black eyes tied up traffic between Santa Cruz and San Jose. The CHP closed down one of the northbound lanes because of the ice, and that meant traffic backed up from the summit to just north of Scotts Valley. Drivers spent as long as two to three hours waiting for traffic to begin moving again. The road reopened around 10 this morning, and while temperatures are not expected to drop to freezing tonight, commuters are warned to be careful. Meantime, there is still no estimate on when Highway 1 south of Big Sur will reopen. A rock slide 23 miles south of Big Sur near the Lime Kiln Campground has shut down the highway. Caltrans crews are busy removing the slide debris and surveying damage to the road. A 50-ton boulder and some smaller rocks did cause some damage there. Highway 1 through Big Sur is still open and businesses on either side of the slide are open. But Caltrans is worried that more rain could cause more slides and make cleanup pretty hazardous. Through traffic is being advised to take Highway 101 to San Luis Obispo County. Well, an accident early this morning shut down Highway 101 at the Monterey San Benito County line. Two horses were killed and the driver of a truck was hurt. The California Highway Patrol says that three trucks came around a curve and found the two horses standing there in the middle of the road. Officers say there was no way for the trucks to avoid hitting those animals. There's no word on, on how the horses got loose. 101 was closed for a couple of hours while the accident was cleaned up. The incredible amount of snow in the Sierra has claimed two more lives. Since last Wednesday, two young men have died in snowboarding accidents. One had just moved to Tahoe from Santa Cruz. Snowboarding is one of the hottest new sports, and with all of the snow in the Sierra, there are more and more newcomers to the hobby. But friends say 22-year-old Isaac Goodkind had a year's experience snowboarding. Nevertheless, he apparently ventured off the groomed ski paths and into the deep snow quite a bit of snow which we haven't had in the last six or seven years so people are pretty unfamiliar with these types of conditions and I think things are being noticed and, and these two unfortunate deaths are obvious examples of such snowboarding can uh, best be described as surfing on snow one bit of advice is never snowboard alone good kind was reportedly with some friends but they have become separated the message against driving drunk appears to be getting through. Central Coast law enforcement agencies say there were fewer drunk drivers during the holiday season. Between Christmas Eve and last night, Monterey County had fewer drunk driving arrests than the same period last year. 52 people were arrested for driving drunk compared to 65 the year before. Santa Cruz County had 58 arrests. Santa Clara County saw a 30% drop in alcohol-related arrests and accidents. Four people died when a helicopter crashed on a remote mountain in northern Utah. Apparently, the helicopter had been leased to shoot a television commercial. Rescuers were making their way to the crash site in Wolf Creek area near Powder Mountain to recover the bodies. Utah authorities say that skiers who were expecting the private helicopter to film a commercial reported it missing Saturday. Police say the chopper was leased to a film company here in California. As many as 14 Americans are dead or are presumed dead, in the crash of a tour bus near Cancun, Mexico. The bus slammed into a power pole and then exploded into flames. Police say the bus driver was speeding. He lost control of the bus when he reportedly swerved to avoid hitting a car that was parked along the side of the road. Witnesses also say the road was wet from a rainstorm. 24 people were killed in that crash. Still ahead tonight, a Bay Area city is given the title of murder capital of the nation. We'll tell you where that is. Also, a trial begins for a Salinas man accused of murdering a man two years ago. And uh, we have to ask, is this Santa Claus? We'll tell you who this man is and what he was doing in a chimney when we come back. Well, one Bay Area city has the dubious honor of being the murder capital of the United States. East Palo Alto recorded 42 murders last year. That's for a city of nearly 24,000 people. Police say that most of the killings were drug-related. Now, by comparison, 
Oakland had 174 murders, or about 46 per 100,000 residents. So East Palo Alto had a homicide rate of 175 per 100,000 residents. Despite the violence, police and uh, residents there say it is still a safe place to live. Ah, the old family vacation and the youngster's birthday. Our best childhood memories are captured on home movies. For our 40th anniversary, we'd like to share those memories. So if you have some great old home movies shot on the Central Coast, why not run them to us? Just dub your movies to VHS and send them to KSBW8 Home Movies, P.O. Box 81 651 Salinas. The Home Movie segment, Fridays at 6 and Sundays at 11 on KSBW Action News 8. Tonight on Jay's show, Tom Selleck and Joe Satriani. The Tonight Show, ring out the old, ring in the nude. I mean, new. And on Dave's show, Polly Draper, Robbie Robertson, and 90% of Dave's audience leaves happy. You can fool all of the people some of the time, and 19% of the people all of the time. Care to solve the puzzle? Wheel of Fortune, weeknights at 7.30. Right here on KSBW 8. She was just exactly what I was looking for. But when she didn't lose weight after her pregnancy, he left her. When I wanted to look the way she did before. They're obsessed with appearance. When I look better, he treats me better. They'd risk anything to look good. I had a gastric bypass and I've lost 130 pounds. They say, I'm killing myself to be beautiful. The most valuable thing that we have is what's inside. Next, Sally. Tomorrow at 9 on KSBW 8. In what seemed like a bad version of the night before Christmas, an Oceanside couple awoke to find an intruder in their chimney. Larry and Margie Beavers awoke to a loud bump and a voice in their living room around 2 a.m. This is a police photo of what they found. A man trying to get into the house through the chimney. He'd gotten stuck in the flue of the fireplace. Uh, Margie Beavers called the uh, police who brought firefighters with them, and they chiseled the man out of the fireplace. See, he's gone. Police booked the man on charges of burglary. What a horrible experience <laughs> for everybody, huh? Another Central Coast lawmaker is announcing plans to run now that Leon Panetta has accepted a post in the Clinton cabinet. Santa Cruz County Supervisor Gary Patton isn't running for Panetta's congressional seat. He's going after the seat vacated by Assemblyman Sam Farr if Farr is elected to Congress. Farr will run in a special election this spring to replace Panetta. And if he wins, Patton says, he wants to represent the 27th Assembly District, which includes the Monterey Bay area. Talk about another election here. He lost the election, but uh, he won the Medal of Mediocrity. President Bush was awarded the Millard Fillmore Society's Medal of Mediocrity. The uh, tongue-in-cheek award is named after the 13th president, Millard Fillmore, of course. Bush clinched the award when his popularity plummeted from a record high after the Gulf War to his defeat by Bill Clinton. Finishing second, none other than the VP, Dan Quayle, Woody Allen finished third. Well, recycling has become an important part of our lives, and it seems like you can recycle just about anything, but one company is taking the idea of recycling a step further. That company, Bent Parade Floats of Pasadena, built more... Last year alone, there were over 190,000 homeless kids in California. I know it's frustrating and depressing to see all of these jobs and not have the skills to apply. But there is an answer, Heald Business College. At Heald, we teach the skills necessary to secure many of these jobs. Good hair. 